So strong ties. Where did you grow up? Where do you have family? Where do you visit every year, etc.? Those are strong ties. Not welcome to the old pre-meds podcast. My name is Dr. Ryan Gray, your host here every week where I get to answer your questions, your non-traditional pre-med questions that you ask over in the non-traditional pre-med discussion subform over at premedforums.com. We have a great question today that I love talking about because I think it's this confuses a lot of students. And that's applying in-state versus out-of-state and really what constitutes potentially strong ties to a public out-of-state school. As we're building up MAP to MAPPD, this is actually one of the things that we want to include. We do have a, a med school search. Uh, it's not going to replace the MSAR. Uh, obviously, the AMC with the MSAR has unique uh, insight into medical schools. We are working, uh, as I'm recording this, uh, hopefully with uh, ACOM, the, uh, the DO organization, to get more detailed information about DO schools into the platform, hopefully some really robust DO information. Uh, but what we're hoping is that if, if we uh, know where you are a resident, what state you're a resident, and you add a public out-of-state school to that list, we can go, hey, did you know that most public out-of-state schools actually don't like don't like out of state residents or if they do like out of state residents they like really 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 competitive stat wise residents to help boost their stats so we can start giving that information then we can ask you do you have any strong ties to that state and we can give you some examples of strong ties and if you say yes then we'll so we'll say great apply to the school if you say no then we'll say you can still apply to the school but know that it's a risk and, and here are the, the reasons. So that's the kind of awesome stuff we're building into mapped, mappd.com. Check it out, mapped.com. All right, so our student today says, what's the best way to narrow down locations on my school list? I am from Colorado, did my undergraduate and graduate education there, and my whole family still lives there as well. After grad school, I moved to Florida and, and have been here for the past three years doing clinical research. Colorado has only one MD school and Florida has eight, so both states are top of my list due to the ties that I have. Do medical schools only focus on residency or do they factor in how long you've been in that location? Technically, I'm still a Colorado resident, but I don't want my chances of Florida schools being affected because of this since I'm invested so since I have invested so much time in Florida. Also, Dr. Gray, that's me, mentions not applying to out-of-state schools unless you have, quote, strong ties to that state. How are we able to show these strong ties? Will they see it in my ECs when I list my work in Florida? Will I be able to talk about it during secondaries, or should I mention it in my personal statement? Please advise. All right, so the first thing that really stands out to me is how are you still a Colorado resident if you're living in Florida? Post graduation. So that's my first thing. You probably should be legally a Florida resident. So I would check that out first to make sure you're not breaking any laws living in Florida uh, as a Colorado resident. My guess is that you should probably be a Florida resident so that you get the Florida residency and figure all of that out for Florida medical schools because there are so many. Florida medical schools. And you mentioned MD. Uh, again, I, I would question why just MD. Uh, Colorado obviously also has Rocky Vista. And as uh, we're recording this, uh, CSU and University of Colorado are working on a partnership for a third medical school up in Fort Collins near CSU. So some options there. The The biggest thing really, though, is the, the strong ties. What constitutes strong ties? Now, I would say if you were a Florida resident, which, I, again, I think you potentially should be. I'm no lawyer and no expert in residency status, but it sounds like you should be. Um, if you're a Florida resident, then you obviously have super strong ties to Colorado, right? You're from here. You did your undergrad, your graduate res residency here, uh, education here. Your family lives here. Those are really strong ties. 
I give this example all the time of a Canadian who applied to the University of Kentucky Medical School. And they said, hey, like you're Canadian, you're an out of, quote unquote, out of state applicant. Why are you applying to our school? And I think it's a common question they ask to all out of state applicants. And so she was able to say, I love Kentucky. Uh, my uncle lives in Kentucky. We visit every summer and blah, 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 right? That is a strong tie. Now, going to vacation one time in Kentucky and loving ha- loving Kentucky and wanting to go back, that's not a strong tie. So think about it in terms of those types of things. How often do you come to the state? Why do you come to the state? What is it that's drawing you back to the state? That will give you strong ties. Obviously, going to high school is is a strong tie for that state. You you probably grew up in that area. This is something I've been trying to get TMDSAS to give some data on because I have a good relationship with them and strong ties to them. And I know the amount of data that they have is they know the out of state right Texas law says less than ten percent or ten percent max. Uh, of students for each class can be out-of-state students, non-Texas resident students. And if schools encroach that or they go over it, whatever, then there are penalties for the school in funding, typically, I think, is is what happens. And so the, the TMDSAS application actually asks, obviously, residency status, but it also asks for high school information. And so they'll, they have the data to, to show what percentage of out-of-state applicants went to high school in Texas. My assumption is that it's going to be a large percentage of students. Now, I talked to Dr. Scott Wright, who's my uh, VP of Academic Advising at MAPT. We do Ask the Dean every week for MAPT um, uh, purchasers, users. And uh, we talked recently about TMDSAS and out-of-state applicants. And he said the the one data point that they could consistently find is that out-of-state applicants, uh, the the best kind of uh, predictor for them to get in is a really, 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 really strong MCAT score. That's the strong. And and I think schools do that just kind of being jaded here. I think schools do that just to pad their their average stats to go, oh, look, our our average MCAT score is of whatever it is, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, something that a lot of schools do, unfortunately. So strong ties. Where did you grow up? Where do you have family? Where do you visit every year, et cetera? Those are strong ties. Not, I've done so much research, right? I, I wrote a book report on on Florida as as in elementary school, and I, I really have strong ties. I want to be here. So really think about those things. And again, just to, to clarify kind of broader picture for students, public schools and private schools, two different types of schools in this system. One isn't better than the other. Public schools are just funded, obviously, in, in part by the state. And every state has different mandates. Again, I mentioned Texas, less than 10% of their students have to come from uh, from out of state or a max of 10%. So public schools will have, and every state is different, right? If you look at University of Michigan is always the example I like to give because they're about 50-50 in state versus out of state as a public institution. And private doesn't necessarily mean that they're out of state friendly. If you look at a school like Mercer, Mercer is 100% a hundred percent in state. So you need to really look at uh, look at the school, look at their website, see who they are uh, inviting and who they're looking for. So really dig into that, look into the 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 school, what they want, what they're looking for, look at your experiences in life, who you, where you've been and and where your family is spread out and all of that stuff. and that will determine the strong ties. Now, again, some schools will ask on secondaries. Other schools will ask during an interview if you get to that point. I remember I applied to the University of Colorado way back when uh, and the, as an out-of-state applicant. And I think it was on a secondary. Like, why are you applying here? I talked about my family living here and uh, obviously being out here and wanting to be close to my family. And I got an interview here. So, it, it just depends on where you're at in your journey and and what experiences and uh, where you've been to determine all of that stuff. So 
good luck on your journey. Again, check out the uh, residency status for Florida versus um, Colorado because I think maybe you should be a Florida resident. You're not in school anymore. Um, and yeah, go go check that out. I hope you have a great week. Don't forget to check out mapped, M-A-P-P-D.com. We'll see you next time here on the Old Pre-Meds Podcast.